Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And uh, we have, of course, Ann Morrison talking about everything from space weather to volcanoes, earthquakes, earth changes, and ultraviolet light. In fact, we now have a new ultraviolet meter that's available on uh, Nutramedical. It'll be posted up this weekend. We're also searching around for a C&D spectral range ultraviolet meter that will be usable by the public. What's the latest news in terms of space weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and all the other Earth changes, in. Well, they're having trouble explaining why we're still having auroras. And we're, in fact, we're having auroras as far south as Iowa and uh, Illinois. And uh, so, and they're having trouble explaining that because we don't have a lot of, uh, uh, we don't have any flares that are coming towards the Earth. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why we're having them. We're having them because of Xenon-133 is being put up by Fukushima. And xenon is like the same gas you put in a xenon tube if you're going to actually create a fancy-looking light with an interesting color. So what we have is is these radio uh, luminescent gases like xenon-133 that are actually lighting it up from simply the background cosmic radiation. And and uh, even if you're not having a major you know solar storm, that's why we're seeing these uh, these northern lights. They don't want to tell you that because of course everybody's mum on trying to talk about Fukushima. And in fact, one of the reports I read today was from uh, Joel Skousen, saying that he was uh, that it's no big deal that all the stuff about Fukushima is hype. Uh, sorry, uh, no, Joel. I agree with ninety nine percent of what you say, which is more than any other written person. But when you're out of your area of expertise, you should not make statements that are going to get you into trouble. The fact is, Fukushima is a far bigger disaster than people can imagine. It's chewing up the ozone layer in the northern hemisphere. And because it's putting out radio iodine, it helps to amplify that chemical reaction that destroys the ozone layer. It's putting up C9133 that's causing weird-looking northern lights. And it's putting out a massive amount of radiation that's not like Chernobyl where the radiation isotopes were pushed apart. These are falling together and causing most of the hydrogen, what's called the uh, zirconite hydrogen reactions and hydrogen explosions but also nuclear explosions, and we're certain that MOX Reactor Pool 3 actually had a nuclear explosion triggered off by a hydrogen explosion. So, uh, Joel, uh, when she makes this statement, and he actually quotes it in his newsletter, and I'll try to pull up the actual article so I can make the precise quote, when uh, <clears throat> she makes this statement that, uh, no, there's, uh, he says there's no problem, it's just minor radiation that people are used to, and it's not causing mutations, it's going to bioaccumulate. Bioaccumulation is something as to why the level of radioactive iodine in Nori, 1,200 miles away in southern Japan, is twice what it was last March, and it's going to continue to increase, just like the radioiodine and cesium and strontium are going to increase across America, and it's why the Environmental Protection Agency are being very evil by packing up the radiation detection site in Boise, Idaho, one of the highest levels of radiation after it was... Uh, reporting super high levels of radiation. The fact is they don't want us to know how bad it is, but it, the Earth changes that it's going to amplify are pretty dramatic, aren't they? Well, I would say so. And, I, you know, it'd be nice if they were a little more uh, transparent on that because... They're, because they're just evil. They're, they're, it's not stupid. <laughs> you have to call it what it is. They're evil. They're covering up. They're purposely interfering with the scientific method of even citizen reporters trying to report it or even the scientists that they have in the these, this reporting station in Boise where they actually packed it up and moved it away. I mean, that's criminal. There's no other word for it. The EPA are interfering and even certifying corrects it 9500 when we know it's a toxin. When the oil spill Eater 2 is a non-toxic certified by in 1800,000, 18,000 spills used by five divisions of the military, and BP even asked the EPA if they can get certified to use the oil spill Eater 2, and they wouldn't allow it. So two years after the Macondo drill site disaster, we have the EPA interfering for ExxonMobil because we have Exxon making our policy and even deciding what toxic drugs we're going to use that won't clear up the mess, but will cover it up and destroy the sea life and cause genetic mutations. That's well, how obscene we're it seeing, is. We're, we're seeing that from the Gulf Stream. Uh, Mike in Chicago called into John's show this morning, and uh, I think you saw the article about the blind shrimp. Yes, um, so tell, tell us about it, because uh, people need to grasp how bad this is. It's, it's very oh, nuts. It's, it is evil. Um, yeah. The shrimp on the east coast of Florida, are uh, they're catching them and they're blind. And they look real pale. They look like they're, uh, uh, let's see, 
I forget the name. And uh, anyway, they, they're blind and they, they look really strange. And so uh, uh, Mike wanted to know is is that part of the? I mean, how did how did what happened in the Gulf of Mexico affect those fish? And yes, I, I want to tell people although the Gulf Stream itself stopped, in other words, uh, the Gulf Stream is that part of the uh, loop current. Um, yeah, the loop current that circles around in the Gulf of Mexico since the uh, BP oil spill. And uh, but there is a current that comes up through the Caribbean and goes. Uh, past Cuba and then goes up the east coast of the United States. It's just not as warm as it used to be because it used to there used to be a component that went into the Gulf of Mexico, looped around and then came back around uh Florida and went up the east coast. So this Gulf the uh Gulf Stream is not as warm as it used to be. But there and there is a little leakage that's coming out of the Gulf of Mexico too. Anyway, for <clears throat> for these uh shrimp to be blind you know, these are uh, indicator creatures. You know, they're, they're right. creatures that tell you what's going on in your environment. And I really feel like the people, the, the women who are pregnant, are going to be experiencing uh, spontaneous abortions and miscarriages. Yeah. And it wouldn't surprise me if, if some of their babies were born blind. Now, blind shrimp is an indication that whatever it is, that is causing this, whether it's the oil or the crexit, is affecting the nervous system. Yeah, affecting the on. neural uh, the neural tube formation called the notochord uh, neural tube, and it means that there's disjunction of the neural tube in the actual form of the eye, uh, if you want to call it the eye folded tube lets at the end of the notochord, which is the ancient cord that they actually formed your spinal cord and your brain on. It means that the uh, this is a very serious sign. Corexit 9500 is completely toxic with its hydrocarbons and disrupts cell membranes. And everything in your cell is literally a liquid crystal microprocessor. The cell membrane is the brain of the cell. So if you have something that disrupts oil, which is the cell membrane, it completely screws up the cell ability to develop for ontogeny, for embryonic development, for not having birth defects. So uh, this is the death of the Gulf of Mexico. We also now have the death occurring as we speak of the Pacific Ocean with radioisotopes. The bitterness, literally read out of the Bible, it talks about the Chernobyl. It's not just the nuclear fallout from Fukushima. Now we have the Corex at 9500. And this is not only destroying the Gulf, but eventually it will get out into into the Atlantic Ocean and circulate throughout the planet, just like it'll take two and a half years for Fukushima to circulate the planet. Okay, <clears throat> before we get off the, uh, before we go to the Fukushima, I wanted to make another comment about the blind shrimp, and that is where I worked at the, uh, in, you know, I worked outside of St. Louis in St. Charles on the Wilden Spring Remedial Action Project, and uh, that was a cleanup, uh, mixed waste cleanup project. And there were so many, there were so many babies that were born uh, to the people, either to the people who work there or who live close by, and they were born without an optic nerve, just the same thing and that we're talking about now. And they formed a society just to help the families uh, whose children were affected by this, because this, this is, I mean, this is so evil. Well, the fact that, you see, our government is completely, here, here's what's going on. As uh, we talked about the other day, and we're going to talk about it next week with Tex Mars. Our foreign policy is now written by the Mossad and the little state of Israel and Talmudic Satanists. We have our corporate policy written by corporations like ExxonMobil telling our EPA what we're going to write or what we're going to approve and include will include a toxic dispersant of oil rather than one that did non-toxic spray on the oil like the oil spill eater too that will get rid of it. Instead, back when they had it uh, spill off of Santa Barbara, they used hay. They used other materials to just grab it and pull it up. Uh, there's no excuse for this. What they're doing is they're purposely not fixing the problem the same way as Fukushima. And when we come back, anybody, including Joel, you need to retract this. These statements by Christina Consolo that you say Fukushima is falling apart. Are you ready? We need to know how bad it is. Welcome back. I want to bring out something else. Just before the program today, I had uh, the opportunity to have a very nasty uh, letter from SG&G certified sent to Dr. Bill Deagle. And it says, read on here, from San Diego Gas and Electric. And I want to read uh, the latest. I just got a flash email here from Rob States, our Master of Science uh, in Northern California. 
and said, we wanted to, to let you know that on April 19, 2012, the California Public Utilities Commission, CPUC, approved a program to offer residential customers the opportunity to opt out of sdg es smart meter program. I thought I already had a solid-state non-RFID meter on my home now. Okay. The CPUC, and by the way, they threatened to put me in jail for a year, treble damages, and seize assets of my home because I wanted an analog meter in my home, which is a, these are a radio hazard danger, a fire hazard danger for electrical fires, and, of course, they are a snoop meter, which violates the uh, wiretapping fraud federal laws. So the CPUC's decision <clears throat> gives residential customers a choice of analog meter and gas meters instead of smart meters. Now, by the way, the federal law does not empower the CPUC to do this. In fact, it says under the, Rob quotes this under his email, under state utility code, utilities may not charge extra to people to protect their safety and health. Smart meters are threats to both according to the scientific studies. And, of course, he attaches a PDF. Code 38.2B states no customer should have to pay separate fees for utilizing services that protect public or customer safety. Code 453B, no public utility shall prejudice, disadvantage, or require different rates or deposit amounts from a person because of medical condition. So um, much more on this. I'm in the process of filing a Public Records Act against the California Public Utilities and San Diego Gas and Electric. We'll be passing this lawsuit over to Jonathan Ebord's legal affiliate group in Arizona. And what's unique about my lawsuit, and this is according to Dr. Um, the uh, Dr. Ole Johansson in Sweden, that the lawsuit that I'm preparing is the first in history. There's other lawsuits in local court, small claims court, etc., and I'll be an expert witness for D.V. Kidd and her lawsuits in Texas. But the lawsuit I'm filing is in federal court, and it'll file it against unjust enrichment, which is a RICO violation, as well a wiretapping fraud. It is a hacking danger for hacking. It causes fires, electrical fires. It causes dirty electricity that pumps it into the ground. And I talked to the wife of Dr. Sam Millen, who will be back on the program. We're coming for you, Dr. Uh, Sam Millen, myself, and many others, we've also been called uh, to do a conference on this. I want to do a conference on smart meters on my live stream channel. Rather than me having to assemble all these people and wait till July, because one of the other hosts for Genesis want me to wait, I'm going to do a multi site live stream conference sometime in the next few weeks for our live stream members, and it'll be up in the archives. <clears throat> and that conference will talk about all these issues. We'll bring on experts like Rob States, Dr. Sam Millen. We'll probably try to bring on uh, our experts in Sweden and elsewhere to talk about this, but it's a very big deal. It's an example of government out of control, isn't it? Well, I, I think uh, I think that's a good idea, and, uh, and uh, you'll be able to... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you already have have enough information. I think you've already won the battle. Well, I, so I already I told him. I, I told him if you come back to try to put a smart meter on my house, I'm coming out of my studio, which is on the other side of the wall, with my shotgun. I already told him I'm going to sue you. I'm going to actually sue the lawyer who threatened me to put me in jail. I'm going to sue this utility, and I'm going to sue the attorneys and the so-called administrative law judges at the CPUC. I'm going to sue you personally for violating under the... Uh, key tam uh, section 83 laws the federal laws that you violate my civil rights you put me in danger and you actually increase the danger of electrical fires uh, medical hazards and wiretapping fraud this is really really bad and it's by the way in agenda 21 the united nations policy which we've estimated in the next 10 years will cost somewhere between eight and twelve trillion dollars to switch over to smart meters including appliance switching over to the Zigbee network so they can literally switch off your appliances remotely by a centrally controlled computer system to so-called protect the grid from extra power utilization demands. That's how crazy this is, and we're not going to put up with it. Okay, can I change the subject to uh, Tungu or Hura? Or yes, let's do that. Uh, yeah, that was just power. an update I had to give there because it had to happen. Let's go into Tungur, which is in probably Indonesia, right? The totally. pedal is right outside Mexico City. Oh, okay, you got the Coca Pedal, pedal, yeah, the the big volcano just outside of, uh, yeah, that's a biggie. Let's let's okay, get We've into been that. watching it. It's been very active for the last two weeks, and of course, it's been active before. But in this case, they are actually planning an evacuation because if the wind should turn to the uh, to the north, 
than the ash from that mountain. It's 40 miles away from Mexico City. Uh, the ash from that mountain could go into Mexico City. So they're planning on, uh, on uh, evacuations. And I don't know how you can evacuate 21 million people, but, or however many million people live in Mexico City. But uh, I wanted to give some precautions. Uh, if, you, if you hear of an earthquake that's magnitude 8 or greater, so a massive earthquake, uh, you want to consider that it can cause a volcanic eruption up to 500 miles away. And um, volcanic eruptions can cause extinction-level events. For instance, uh, they can cause volcanic winters, and in some cases they can just they they kill you they they carry poisonous gases and the gases uh turn to acid and they just eat the flesh off your bones yeah not only that they also not only have acid they have high levels of of fluoric uh, of, of hydrofluoric acid which is extremely toxic and fluoride but they also contain radioisotopes most people don't realize that uh, much of the uh, volcanoes that occur in iceland and elsewhere are also radioactive ash they're not just regular ash they're radioactive right so I wanted to put out my opinion, and that is, if you think that you're going to be under a cloud of, radio, of, of volcanic ash, what you want to do is you want to wear the N95 medical masks. Which is why we have them in our radiation kit now. We added two NASH N95 masks, as well as Neutrotrella, Neutrodefense, and Neutrodyne. <clears throat> Yes, and um, very, the, the ash can actually be smaller than bacteria, and so it can get into your lungs, and uh, it won't get out. I mean, it'll, it'll, you'll drown in, in cement, essentially. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard. It's not soft. It looks like it's soft, but it isn't. It's very, very hard. It doesn't dissolve in water. It's extremely abrasive and mildly corrosive and conducts electricity when wet. So if you're under a volcanic cloud, and I remember when Mount St. Helens went, they had, um, they had the volcanic dust that was falling in Portland, Oregon. Uh, once in the air, the wind can blow those tiny ash particles tens of thousands of miles away from the volcano. And uh, the gritty ash can lead to power outages, prevent communications, and, of course, disorient people. Now, you, if you're going to be under a, a volcanic cloud, ash cloud, which uh, remember that the CDC says that you should only wear the N95 mask for about 15 minutes because about that time your blood oxygen saturation level will fall below 90 percent. So they're only good for going from your home to your car and then I hope that you have the kind of car where you don't suck in the outside air where you can turn that button on and just use the interior air and then going from the car to your office. Yeah. Yeah, there were, we're uh Seeing earth changes in every possible way are increasing the danger of crop failures, the danger to being outside, the danger with Fukushima. And now we have volcanic ash flying over Mexico City soon and mass evacuations planned even of Tokyo from Fukushima. Welcome back, and we now joined by Robert Felix. Robert, uh, what's the latest in terms of... Uh, the ice ages and other changes occurring. Of course, we now have the danger that Mexico City is under the risk of a major ash cloud, which could cause evacuation of up to over 30 million people, possibly up to 35 million with the greater Mexico City area. Um, same thing going on with uh, Fukushima, Daiichi. And I, and I have to repeat this, that the danger is not something that may happen. It's happening as we speak. The amount of radiation that's being released that we're constantly being bathed with here in North America is going to bioaccumulate. The amount of cesium, strontium, plutonium, americium, all these radioisotopes is increasing, and even in the upper atmosphere, the xenon-133, the radioiodine-131 is actually showing up and destroying the ozone layer. People need to be aware we could have crop shock, where ultraviolet C and D light literally wipe out crops in the northern hemisphere. We're dealing with literally earth changes on a galactic level that people don't understand. After December 21st, we're going to be exposed to major superstorms on the sun. And there's actually, if you go to spaceweather.com, you can see a lot of issues going on in terms of space weather, um, including a major activity 
that's turned away from us right now, but this uh, solar dynamic observatory is recording a massive cloud of plasma flying over the sun's southwestern limb. So when it turns around back toward us, because I think it turns every, what, 28 or 29 days, the sun? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 27 and days. It's going, to, uh, it's going to turn back toward us, and the sun is having fits. And if those fits happen to turn in our direction with our ultraviolet light to protection and our magnetosphere down and our ozone layer being destroyed by Fukushima, we're going to have some bad times. And people don't understand this. They think that we're making all this up. They also have people that are not nuclear or scientific experts that make statements that think that Fukushima is just minor and it's not poisoning us. It's going to poison us. In fact, five years or ten years from now, it's going to be very difficult to get safe, non-radioactive food. Right now, if people are getting seafood from the Pacific Ocean, they should take the radiation detector, their Inspector Plus, and the new one we are now selling through our new sub-website is Inspector EXP. We'll also have the uh, Monitor 4, which is a few hundred dollars. The Inspector EXP is 780 but it has a special radiation probe you can bring right over the fish or whatever you want to eat, like your veggies, and it'll determine right away of buy. It has, like I should say, a buy or don't buy uh, flash on it. If it goes click, 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 back away from the fish counter. Oh, that's great. They finally came out with a low-level probe, huh? Yeah, they have a low-level probe that's very nice. You can hold it with one hand while the meter's there, and you can see the numbers, but it'll make an audible sound. So it'll, I'm sure that the manager of the store will come out if you walk near the fish counter and it starts going click, 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 and you back away while somebody videotapes you on their iPhone 4 Siri. It'll be quite humorous. Well, but they'll, they'll, they'll call the police, and you'll be accused of a public disturbance. That's okay. I, I, I like public there. disturbance. No, I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to take my radiation detector and go do it, do it. And I dare them to try to arrest me. I dare them to do it. I triple dog dare them to do it. Please arrest me. Please have a real conundrum because the damage that I'll do to the police department and the local authorities in the store, because I know the store manager down at the local stores, if, I, if my detector is fine, it doesn't go click, click, click. But if it goes click, 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 bad stuff's going to happen. And what? And, and, that's what we have to we have to have you know activists, peace citizens who finally decide we've had enough. We're not getting reporting by the EPA. We're not getting reporting by the government departments. Even UC Berkeley won't return my calls or emails. I am so pissed off and so mad about this. That's why we're having a consortium of scientists like Dr. Chris Busby and others. We're going to put together. I would have put together a live stream conference long before we have the conference that they're planning in Austin, Texas, in July. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. If reactor cooling pool four falls, if this thing has a major burp and we have a hydrogen-based explosion that can trigger off a nuclear explosion, they're going to have to evacuate Tokyo, and we're going to have a massive plutonium radiation cloud that's going to come eastward toward North America, and we're already being fed radiation every day as we speak, and people just don't get it. They think, oh, well, you're exaggerating, including Joel Scouts, and they think we're exaggerating. We shouldn't be scaremongering people and frightening them. If you don't take radiation protection right now seriously, the unborn are already getting damaged and destroyed. They're getting burst defects, and it'll soon start affecting the us, and it'll cause Alzheimer's, vascular disease, and every kind of illness caused by immune system failure. And so the liars that tell you it won't hurt you, no, it won't hurt you right away, but the open, invisible maw of the giant, what was that monster back in the, that the Japanese had in their monster movies? Is, uh, I call it Fukushima Zilla. That's it. That's my latest version. Fukushima Zilla instead of Godzilla. So Fukushima Zilla has an invisible maw open ready to swallow up humanity, and people try to unqualifiedly say, "Don't worry, Fukushima is not going to eat you. It is going to eat wow. you." Okay. Between that, between that and the volcanoes, you, you had asked about the, the, the or you had mentioned that volcano, right? Popo Catapetal. But, you know, yeah. I, I checked. I've been having a lot of people ask on my website, you know, has volcanic activity been increasing? Uh-huh. And I, I have been telling people that, in, that volcanic activity is, is uh, the strongest that has been since uh, Columbus. But um, I checked the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History for that question. Has volcanic, volcanic activity been increasing? And they say, we don't think so. Notice they didn't say they're sure, it's just that they don't think so. Uh, And what they say, they do agree that the number of active volcanoes over the last few centuries shows a dramatic increase. And that's their words, dramatic increase. I agree with that. But then they note that the increase is closely related to increases in the world's human population and communication. 
We believe, they say, that this represents an increased reporting of eruptions rather than increased frequency of a global volcanism. More observers in wider geographic distribution with better communication and broader publication. In other words, they think the increase in global volcanism is more apparent than real. But notice, they didn't say they're sure. They say they think this. They say they believe this. That's... uh, those aren't words you normally hear coming from a scientific institution that they believe. I, I, firstly, I think they're lying because we know that even since March of last year, we're not talking about ancient history. There's been a 500 percent increase in actual measured volcanic activity around the Sendai, Japan area, and Fukushima Daiichi. 500 yeah, percent. So the, this foolishness of these so-called pseudoscientists makes me more angry than these so-called tenured professors and liars in government departments that won't tell us the facts that the whole earth is shaking, rattling, and rolling. And these earthquakes and volcanoes are popping off, and they're putting in grave danger 75% of our nuclear reactors that are sitting near a fault line strike zone, like the San Jacinto fault zone that's an upthrust right beside San Onofre. This 29th, this Sunday, there's a big protest right at the San Onofre reactor site. If you go on our website, we posted it up this week. The fact is, and of course a lot of them are what I call what I call the the green side, the, you know, the phony green side environmentalists that think that we're peak oil and all this other foolishness. But the fact is, they should not start this plant up. There are actual engineering defects that they've discovered in the actual tube designs. They know that they've tweaked it as so-called being like, and they added a lot more tubes to the system. This reactor is sitting near a false subductive uh, thrust zone, which could, in their own words of experts, 13 years ago when they discovered it could cause a level 7 to 9 plus earthquake which would, of course, decimate the reactor core and cause a massive release of radiation to 8.5 million people in Southern California alone and then spread eastward. So these people are, again, the same kind of, of idiots that, that set up a nuclear reactor system in Japan on a bunch of fault zones, including reactor 1 and 2, that are sitting right on top of fault lines. Literally, the reactor core itself is sitting in reactor 1 right on a fault line, right on top of it. Well, even without the, uh, not talking about the reactor cores, isn't it true that the water that they've used to cool it down, the, the water that is so radioactive, is, is just being held in, in uh, you know, it's being dammed up? And, and no, no, they're still leaking it everywhere. It's going into the groundwater. They're actually taking pumps, and they're now going to put new pumps in to pump out a 1,000 tons of water per day and pump it right out of the groundwater where it's building up and pump it directly into the Pacific Ocean. A thousand tons a day they want to pump out from wells around Fukushima because it's leaking out so fast into the groundwater table around Fukushima Daiichi. They want to pump a thousand tons unfiltered directly radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. Wow. Now, when I hear comments by people who don't spend, like I do, hundreds and hundreds of hours and have a background in quantum and nuclear physics and work in occupational radiation toxicology, you need to shut the hell up when you're talking to people out there that don't know what you're doing, and telling people everything's okay when it's not. It's not okay. This is not a not-okay time. It's not a future maybe happening. This is happening as we speak, and it's the beginning of the disaster, not the end of it. Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report, and uh, we have some more amazing news. And, of course, a lot of people say, Dr. Deagle, you're just exaggerating. Well, I'm actually going to take a, a section of the reports here. I got an email actually from Dr. Ron Klatz, who's the president of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. With 22,000 doctor members worldwide, Dr. Ron Klatz, and he said, this interesting article written here, it says, hanging by a thread. Uh, and, uh, he, and, of course, the quote is with Christina Consolo's essay. And, of course, it may be hyperbole for her to say that we're in immediate danger of the whole northern hemisphere, but it's not actually because this is a slow burn. This is like taking the frogs in the beaker, only it's a radioactive beaker, and it could speed up dramatically. If the amount of radiation just in a MOX cooling pool number four has enough radioisotopes, and there's seven storage pools there, and they actually brought in radioisotopes from the former Soviet Union because it was an illegal plutonium enrichment program to make plutonium detonators for a Japanese nuclear armaments weapon system, and they can literally make nuclear weapons in a matter of a weekend with the, some of those advanced rockets to put them into orbit the Japanese have. The Japanese have a giant storehouse of nuclear materials that could be literally the largest supply outside the United States and Russia on the planet, and people just don't get it, uh, what's going on there. 
Uh, so anybody who says this is a minor problem really doesn't understand. And if you're not taking radiation protection now, that's why we have a radiation protection thing, and people should start thinking about a greenhouse, about protection. You've said it over and over again, and uh, we need to be checking the amount of UV light. Go online to find out what the UV index is, because you may be surprised how high it is, even if it's a cloudy day. People should be aware of the radiation levels. They're not going to get it unless they get a radiation detector and say, oh, my gosh, look how high it is. Uh, I, I'm surprised some days when it's kind of normal, and other days it's like three to five, four times higher than background, and they're like, oh, my gosh. And I know we're being bathed with tritium and other radioisotopes. So people who say it's not going to hurt us, they're crazy. These are crazy people who need to shut the hell up. They need to stop talking when they're talking about things they don't understand. Well, you know, when you when you put that that's coming from Fukushima on top of what is going to come from natural sources, because our, our magnetic field strength, no one is questioning this at all, our magnetic field strength has been declining rapidly. It's, it's declined uh, more than two-thirds in the last 2,000 years. The rate of decline is picking up. That magnetic field, our magnetosphere, is what protects us from cosmic rays and... That's what protects us from more radioactive material like uh, like uh, strontium and beryllium-10, carbon-14. Uh, those all rain to the ground uh, during magnetic reversals, and as our magnetic field is declining, we're going to see more and more of that. And a, a layer of iridium, of too. A layer yeah. of iridium, which is element uh, 77, iridium. Uh, which uh, is an interstellar space that rains the ground because it's literally outside the Van Allen radiation belt, and when the magnetosphere collapses, the iridium descends to Earth as well as helium-3, which is, by the way, because the moon doesn't have a magnetic field, the concentration of helium-3 on the moon is 100,000 to 10 million times higher concentrations, which is why they can mine it there. Wow. Because it's a product of solar wind. And they know this, and the government knows it, and that's why they don't want you to tell that they don't really need oil at all. We can have tokamak fusion reactors, plasma distribution networks. We, do, we can have wave energy. We can have energy from the torsion field, which is called Tesla energy. And by the way, to get rid of radioisotopes, and I'm going to propose this for scientists out there listening worldwide, what Nikola Tesla, and I finally figured it out, what he did is he recommended to... Uh, to the original researchers in oil, on, on new radioisotopes, that you create a scalar, what's called a cyclotron ion resonance of in the same element of the periodic table. So, for example, if you're getting rid of a radioisotope, you create a, you take a non-radioactive element in the same particular uh, periodic table, and you create that scalar frequency and broadcast it. It shakes literally the non-radioactive portions of the nuclei out and literally accelerates the T1 half for the radioactive decay index, which is why high-energy magnetic fields and plasma fields around stars can accelerate degradation or half-life. It's not fixed. And T Tesla told uh, uh, the original researchers on radioisotopes, what's her name, Marie Curie, that he could uh, stop the effect of the accumulated bioradiation she had, which caused her to eventually develop a claw hand by using scalar technology. And what basically he did, and this can be done now, it's more advanced, it's called ion cyclotron resonance, and we do are going to be talking about this further in the program. You can create an ion cyclotron resonance to actually detoxify radioactive isotope areas by rapidly accelerating the decay. So instead of taking 200 years, it might take two years to decay elements. Uh, that should be done. We have, should have our scientists looking at this significantly because we can create these type of special ionic fields that will actually speed the decay of these isotopes. Dr. Bill, again, I would like to change the subject to the uh, mad cow disease that was found in your state. Oh, my gosh. That's scary stuff. This mad is scary cow, stuff. Very scary. And very I scary. Just wanna, I just really quick want to go over those things that people can do to avoid exposure to this uh, prion disease. Right. And then, by the way, you, it was found in Northern California, and it was found in a cow they say didn't enter the either meat or milk production. Uh, people need to be aware that it is a problem, and the only way to get rid of prions, believe it or not, you can't even have a cow that's dead buried in the ground because the prions will stay in there hundreds of years. Or if a dead a deer has the prion disease and the cow eats grass grown on a pasture where the deer died 10 or 20 years ago, that prions will ascend right into the actual grass fibers, and when the cow eats the grass fibers, that prion disease will enter through their bloodstream, through their central nervous system, their brain, and cause spongiform encephalopathy, 
which in humans right. is called Jakob Kreutzfeldt disease. That was first discovered in called scrapie in Australia, where people would eat sheep and sheep brains and end up with a scrapie because the prions would jump from the sheep into the sheep herders and the sheep shearers down in Australia and eat away at their brain and create little bubbles called prion-induced spongy form encephalopathy. Okay, I just want to give your uh, your listeners the uh, some advice. And this mm-hmm. is published, by the way, so there's, I mean, this is nothing new. Yeah, send it to me and I'll post just, it up, too. Okay, I'll send it to you. Avoid brains, neck bones, and beef cheeks. Avoid bone marrow and cuts of beef that are sold on the bone. So, in other words, get them, you know, get the cuts of beef that are boneless. Choose boneless cuts of meat. And for ground beef, choose only meat that is ground on site in the store. And uh, cooking does not kill mad cow disease, and uh, that's right. They they even sterilization techniques in hospitals do not kill prions. But apparently, though, there and, and this is an interesting thing because I pulled some research and I'll post it up. There are specific nutritional deficiencies that allow prions to infect you. So if you're deficient in certain nutrients, your the prions are more likely to infect you and that to transfect through your gut wall and your nervous system. So right. it doesn't. It, it's permissive. In other words, even if there's prions in the environment or your diet, it doesn't mean you're going to get it unless you're nutritionally deficient in specific things that will cause that to happen. Well, and I think that they're not giving us the whole story there. Uh, the, the fact that there was just a random chance that they picked up this, this uh, disease, and I don't know how they do their testing, but they may mix up um, several bra- brains from several cows, to do their testing. I mean, it was just a... Well, well, they should have done testing on every animal that is for human fo- uh, production in the country. And they should be doing sampling of, of, of wild game as well because there's certain areas where it should be, don't, if you shoot the deer or the game, do not eat it, even if it looks healthy. So we don't have that. We need to have, again, the U.S. Oh, Department of Agriculture oh, do. is not doing proper testing of no, all no, of the animals. In the, I'm talking about they all the animals, not just some of them. When they, when they issue a hunting permit for deer now, they ask the hunters to bring in the deer head. And so you'll find carcasses out in the woods with their heads missing. And then right, they have to bring it into the USDA. But the problems are they're reporting it online. And also, are they doing the same thing for, uh, for cow? And for, you know, people don't realize that if a cow has prion disease, it will be in the milk. It will be in milk products. And uh, I don't think it's in the, in the general environment now but i know that there's a danger and the danger comes firstly if they simply tested all the cows and tested all the pastures too where those cows were eating because if there's any animal that died or had excrement or anything like stool that that got into the environment those prions from that animal that were infected will actually just like viruses or bacteria in, in, in a human they'll literally transvect the environment and make it likely that other animals eating grass in that environment could get sick with prion disease so I don't think that level of, of, uh, of surveillance is present in terms of cows and no, any other animals. It no, it's not. And it, and it needs to be because as an infectious disease expert, and I can tell you, a public relations prepper expert, I can tell you our government is beyond incompetent. They're evil, they're stupid, and they're dangerous. And we need to stop them and we need to consult or actually contract private consultants and universities and have them on a short contract. And if they don't perform cut the cord and these government department employees need to be fired because they're not doing their job about the disaster in, in uh, Fukushima the disaster in Macondo and the British petroleum oil disaster nothing they're doing nothing to protect the environment or protect us from dangerous food air and water nothing. they're telling us is global warming when it's really global cooling exactly amazing Check it out the websites again, IceAgeNow.info, 